It's not every day you get a new addition to the BSD family, but here it is, in all its glory, Live Step. And we're going to check it out after the intro. Okay, we'll start by downloading. So I'm just going to press save and OK. And as you can see, it's um, it's a 1.4 gigabyte download. Uh, reasonable speed. It's not too bad. And uh, we'll get cracking. So I'm booting up in the test machine as normal. USB stick is inserted. And normally I would fast forward this particular uh, boot sequence but I just want to show you just uh, how this one looks this is based off uh, Fury BSD which in itself is based off uh, FreeBSD and it's Fury BSD 12.1 but with a GNU step uh, desktop and immediately I see the splash screen and it's very nice I like this um, yeah you see the aesthetics that this particular spin is wanting to achieve is apple an older version of OS X, I think and with the splash screen and the screenshot that i've seen i, I think that they're pretty much um they're pretty much on target for what they're wanting to achieve One thing I found with this particular section, which is probing for an internet address, is that my test machine can sometimes be a bit finicky in, um, in obtaining a DHCP. But this particular instance, it did it, and I'm impressed by that. So we have, there's the desktop, and overall first impression is very nice. I like it. I know what they're aiming for, and it looks like they're achieving it. Um, it's got that Apple vibe, the older Apple vibe. The icons, the colouring scheme, the shadows, it's very nice, I do like it. And the first thing we see is the file viewer, which is the default opening program. Uh, you got menu at the top, uh, side, icons there. We'll have a look at the, uh, we'll have a look at the top. And it's like a, a global bar, I think that's what we're going to be finding. Um, Info panel, preferences, yeah. It's functionality. Yeah, some are greyed out, but that's because it doesn't apply at the moment. I must admit, I've not really used GNU Step. Um, it's not something which I can say I've used in any detail. And as a first impression so far, it's kind of it feels a bit weird to me, but very nice so far. I like the I like the look. I like the feel. And I know it's kind of weird when you say the, the feel, but it's it's the way that the mouse interacts. The way that the mouse, it, when you click on something, it it, it kind of like you feel like there's quality there. I know it's really it's it's, it's kind of weird. It's, it's very subjective. I know, but when you're presented with a screen and it's got slick presentation and you've got shadows and it's all very apply you kind of like feel it as you open applications and yes all right well no we, we'll we'll check out these on the right first so you've got your keyboard mapping i'll just go to uh gb and there's no way that you can actually set it so i don't know whether it does it automatically probably does uh install and you got your zero conf Okay, and create Fury BSD Live Media app. Oh, I like this. Let's have another look. This will download Fury BSD Live Image and write it to an attached storage device. So it looks like you can create GNOME based, KDE based, Lumina based, Mate, and XFCE. Very nice. So, I, if, presumably, if you put in another stick you can create it okay sounds interesting i'll have to check this one out at a later date very nice on the left hand side panel we've got uh, the file viewer which is default anyway uh, 
Um, I'll look at them later. A text editor, which is a text edit. Okay. Absolutely no way that I can zoom in. Mm. Okay, well, I'll have a look at that later again. Uh, terminal. Looks, looks like it's using CSH. You've got simple agenda, um, a calendar, and appointment. This I've never seen before. Now, this is a new one for me. I'm going to have to be checking this out on my main machine, but it looks really nice. I've been wanting something similar to this for a while. Uh, I use KDE's um, own version, but this is, looks like it's a bit lighter, so I might try this one out. Very nice. Okay. I've actually never heard of this one before, so uh, that's looking good so far. Alright, so edit appointments, very good. Yeah, very nice. I'll check that one out later. Uh, I'll just close these. Uh, I don't want to save, no. Right. Uh, mail. Oh, new mail. I've not seen this one either. I'm learning a lot today. I'll have to check out these uh, new apps. So, I'll like this, uh, yeah, open a dummy, server dummy account, so I can just have a look. Uh, let's have a look at the compose window. Nice and clean. I'm liking this. Dresses. Mm. Very nice and clean so far. Uh, ooh. Ah, right, you can change colors, okay. Um, well, I could if I knew how to work it. It's not a fault in the uh, program, it's a fault in my uh, experience with it. Okay. Hmm. That's like a uh, log viewer. Okay. Useful in this early uh, version of the OS. Ah, okay. Now, this I have used. If I could type, live step. Uh, I'm using the word, I'm using the name Livestep. I I I don't know whether that's the official name of the the release. It might be, it might not be. I you know, if the developer wants to uh, contact me and actually give me clarification, it's listed as Livestep on the uh, the download page. So even though it's based on Fury BSD, that's good. Very nice. I like Otter browser. It's it's not a bad little browser. So far, everything's looking and feeling actually very good. That's it. There doesn't seem to be much more available in that. Um, but I'm liking it so far. I'm liking the potential. I can see I can see the potential here for a great OS. Or a user interface uh, as an introduction to a FreeBSD. I can actually see it. And it's something very different. G Workspace. Oh, I've not heard that one before. Oh, I'm, there's so much I've uh, I've not seen before on this. But yeah, imagine you've got, you got the big boys. You've got KDE, you've got Gnome, Mate. But if they can release a FreeBSD OS with GNU Step on top, that fully functions out of the box, absolutely brilliant, and gives you that uh, Mac experience. Okay, well, we're gonna try install, and immediately, this reminds me, something similar to the, I, I might be wrong, but something similar to the, the Debian installer, the way that it looks, and the color scheme. Are we gonna get a graphical install? I think we are. There's a license. It's beautiful license is the BSD license. It really is. So select hard drive. I'm like, this is brilliant. I like this. 
uh, just type in name. I mean, I do love the traditional FreeBSD installer. It's, it's something which it never really changes over time. There's a few additions here and there, but in general, it's the same whichever release you install. But this, this is something nice. I like this. So, okay. And enable users to log in over. All oh, right, come over to enable SSH. Okay. Enable it. It gives you the actual address you should use. This is a nice little touch. Set time zone based on current year. Go on then. I'll have to select it again, I think. Yeah. Nope, again. Okay, and that's it. We're off. Very nice. I like this. Yeah, I mean, you, you get a graphical installer on Ghost PSD, and theirs is very polished indeed. But this is a, a different spin on it. It's even more simpler if that's uh, if that was possible. Hmm. I'm not sure what file system they're using. I would imagine it's ZFS, um, but we'll see once uh, we're installed. And I will fast forward this bit till we get to the end. And wow, I think that was uh, not too bad. And a nice big green sign with a tick in it to say it's been installed. Excellent. Restart, take the USB stick out of the machine. And then we'll see you on the other side. Right, we're in the uh, new session. Oh, it defaults to live user, which is a hang up from the actual install. So we'll just clear that. Put in my uh, name. The login screen looks very nice. Nice and clean. And look, the overall the overall color scheme and fonts used in this is very nice and clean. Very, very good. I would say first impressions last, so, so far very nice. Hmm, not too bad. It's the same setup as it was on the uh, live session, so I don't expect any different. I just want to have a quick look to see if the uh, NVIDIA drivers have been loaded. So I'm just going to go KLD start. And no, no NVIDIA. Although, there are some... Uh, I... Hmm, okay. Integrated graphics driver is loaded. And there are some modules which... That I think relate to touchpads. So that possibly might be good news for people who install this onto uh, laptops. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to have a, a revisit some of these because it just occurred to me that I, uh, I got it wrong. Now, these applications here, their menus are actually, yeah. The menus appear at the top in the same way that Macs do. And uh, I should have known that, but there you go. So for the terminal, if it's a uh, new window, yeah, that's fine. And a new tab. Ah, okay, new window. And you can alter the, uh, the text on that just simply by Changing it this way through the menu here. Yeah. I should have known that, and I do apologise. This actually uh, it reminds me of something that you get on um, RiskOS or RiskOS. Very nice. You know the applications in this uh, new step theming actually uh, do do remind me of that. Ah. Interesting that no way seem to get that to go away. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, we might have found a glitch. Mind you, it is work in progress, as the uh, the developer says. But we'll try that again. Just gonna have another look around. I'm gonna look on here. 
And uh, all right, so yeah, I just thought that the applications that we saw in the the little menu bar was all that was installed, but I've missed all these, which is uh, different for me. Okay, so we have a jigsaw game that. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll try something else. Oh, good old uh, block type game. Ah, chess. Now this is beautiful. Look at this. Look how this is rendered. Absolutely gorgeous. Not that I can play, but um, it looks nice. Oop. No, that was a speedy move. Very good. Very nice. And looking at all these applications, you get a you get a lot here as well. So, yeah, maybe another video for this because there is so much included. Right, I don't want this video to go on too long, so really I'll start wrapping it up. As a first look and a first run, I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't run it in depth. This is, you know, the first time I've used it. But I'm very impressed. I mean, the, the developer says, you know, it's experimental and it's work in progress. And it is. It's not something that really you should be using uh, for a production book, obviously. But for a first release, well, I presume it's the first release, um, to get it to look like this. I mean, it's on a solid foundation. It's based upon Fury BSD, which really is free BSD with a pre-installed GUI. So, you know, your underlying operating system is going to be solid. It's just the GUI on top might need a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of working. But that's fine. I can't think of any of a I might be wrong, but I'm sure I can't even think of a Linux distribution that runs GNU Step. So really, you know, you're going into uncharted territory. So as long as I say, well done to the developer. Keep up the good work. And it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses, because I think this is going to be a good release. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video. And if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well.